what's up hello welcome back to another episode of coffee and creepy if you are new here and you don't know why i call this coffee and creepy it is because i am obsessed with iced coffee and i like to drink iced coffee and invite you to get your own iced coffee or your favorite drink of choice and let me tell you something creepy but tonight our drink of choice is fiji water because I already had two coffees today, one being a giant pumpkin spice latte, and then I also had a Celsius. So I don't think it's a good idea if I drink more caffeine. I was filming some TikToks, and one of the subjects that I was filming about is the Demon House, the Ammon's Haunting, or the House of 200 demons if you're not familiar if you're a paranormal fan i'm sure you know who zach bagans is it is the demon house that he made a documentary on it's on amazon prime it's really good you should watch it if you have amazon prime but it is the haunting of latoya ammons and her family and i thought we should talk about it because it's really freaking terrifying so let's do that grab your drink and uh let's get creepy also, if you want to follow me on TikTok, I'll put it right here. Uh, I post a lot more on TikTok, but all of my longer content goes here. So Latoya Ammons, her mom and her three children moved into this rental home in Gary, Indiana in November 2011. Now, right off the bat, just like days of living in this house, things started getting weird already. Even though it was snowing and freezing outside, their screened in porch they noticed was covered in flies. And no matter what they did to try to get rid of the flies, they couldn't get rid of them. So aside from that, in the middle of the night, Latoya and her mother started hearing footsteps. The movement was coming from the basement. It was as if someone was coming up from the basement and into the kitchen. But of course, when they would check, no one would be there. They even started locking that door that goes from the basement into the kitchen and still the footsteps did not stop. So clearly we know it's not a human. So after this, things just continue getting worse. So Latoya's mom wakes up in the middle of the night and she sees a shadow figure pacing in her living room. And while some could say, oh, you, you know, it's dark, your eyes are playing tricks on you, whatever. I mean, I, if I see something pacing, I'm not going to assume that it's my eyes playing tricks on me. Why is it moving? Latoya's mom actually found wet footprints right where she saw the shadow figure pacing. Riddle me that. So regardless of these terrifying occurrences that are already happening, they still tried to make the best of it and live a normal life in this home. But things just kept getting worse. Four months after moving into this home, they experienced one of the most terrifying things you could experience in this situation. On March 10th, 2012, Latoya saw her daughter levitating. Her 12 year old daughter was levitating above her bed. She said she thought, what is going on? Why is this happening? So the family, even though they were extremely terrified, they started praying and the girl finally <laughs> went back down to the bed. So that day there was actually family members visiting and they literally fled. I mean, wouldn't you though? That's terrifying. Although I don't know, I, I would not abandon my family member who just saw their kid levitating over a bed. We would probably be figuring out how to cleanse their house. But that is what Latoya did. So her family fled <laughs> and the ones that lived there, Latoya, her mom and her three children. Latoya obviously stayed and Latoya started trying to find help, which wasn't the easiest thing in the world. I mean, look at the situation. So unfortunately, most of their local churches did not take them seriously. Only one kind of did and told them that they're probably dealing with a haunting. No shit, Sherlock. I mean, clearly that's why we're asking churches, you know? So this one church recommended that they clean with, with bleach and ammonia, which by the way, don't mix those chemicals. That was kind of bad advice. I would have more so clean, maybe cleaned with bleach and then blessed the house with some oil 
But anyway, they did tell them to draw oil crosses all over on every door and window, which is correct information. Uh, that is exactly how I would personally bless a house. I've blessed many of my own houses this way. You mark any entrances to the house essentially with an oil cross. Now they did contact two clairvoyants, which told them that that house was filled with about 200 entities and that the best thing they could do would be to move. I don't disagree. For whatever reason, they obviously couldn't move right now and it just kept getting worse. The dark entity in the home or the dark entities in the home continued to terrorize them, which you know these things feed off of fear. So the more they were scared, the stronger this thing was going to get. Now at this point, it's really targeting the children. The children are starting to speak in deep demonic voices saying things like, I will kill you. Their eyes would be bulging out of their heads and they would have those unnatural demonic grins. And then Latoya herself started to feel like she was not in control of her body. Latoya said that her youngest son actually started speaking to a boy that no one else could see. Not only that, he was thrown across the room by something. Her daughter was also being terrorized by voices telling her that she'd never see her family again and that bad things were going to happen to her. So at this point, because of all the terrorizing that was going on and them really not having any help, and who do you tell this stuff to? Like, how do you report this? They started missing a lot of school, which then concerned the school system and obviously like DCS, which I think is their Child Protective Services, and police started to get involved because they're like, why the hell are your kids not coming to school? But it's like, who, I'm, I can't imagine being in Latoya's position and not knowing what to do and knowing that nobody like that is going to believe you without actually having proof. Now on April 19th, 2012, Latoya actually took her children to the doctor. She wanted them to be examined and he in fact did experience their low voices and really disturbing statements. So this thing wasn't afraid to show itself through the children anywhere. Now their doctor actually said, in 20 years, I have never seen anything like this. So during this doctor visit, the children just progressively kept showing signs of demonic possession. Like this thing was showing itself to these kids at the doctor. And even according to the report released from the Department of Child Safety, the medical staff witnessed Latoya's youngest son fly into the air and into a wall without anyone touching him. What's even more terrifying is that this boy reportedly walked up the wall and flipped over his grandmother. A nurse and a DCS caseworker witnessed this and literally ran out of the room. So unfortunately, even after the caseworker witnessing this, the DCS, the department didn't believe this situation was happening, blamed Latoya and took her children away. I can't imagine after going through all of that and then you being blamed and the the worst thing ever happening to you. Like that's worse than anything. So in this kind of situation, it is required that the police go walk through the home. They have to investigate the mom. You can't just take kids away from their mom and not investigate. So DCS took, you know, the cops out to Latoya's home to go do a walkthrough. So anyway, while inside the home, the police, they were inside the house with Latoya's mom, the children's grandmother. The police officers are said to have noted a lot of bizarre events. According to their actual report, their radios were malfunctioning. They captured the presence of a white smoky apparition and even got a voice that wasn't the police and wasn't Latoya's mother on a recording saying, during this visit, they also found an oily residue or oily substance dripping from the blinds. If you don't know, that's another sign of demonic possession. Um, like substances, like oily substances or tar sometimes seeping out of places. So at the time, a local priest named Michael Magino, I think is how you pronounce it had heard about it and he wanted to investigate as well while the cops were actually in there. He actually wrote a request 
to a bishop to perform an exorcism on Latoya because remember, she started feeling like she was losing control of her body. Not only that, her life. So the priest actually performed this exorcism in front of a DCS worker and two police officers. The DCS case manager actually said, we felt like someone was in the room with us, something breathing down your neck. So the Reverend actually performed a total of three exorcisms on Latoya. After the third exorcism, I'm assuming during the exorcisms, the priest got the name of the demon that was possessing and harassing this family. And he actually wrote it down on a piece of paper and burned it. After this, Latoya started to feel normal again. Her and her mother actually moved back to Indianapolis where they actually came from. And Latoya, as she should, regained custody of her babies. They were happy to put that house behind them. It was later purchased by the king of the paranormal, Zach Bagans. He did his documentary and then he demolished it in 2016. But knowing Zach, if you know anything about Zach, he kept some pieces from the basement because um, it was said that the basement was where most of the activity was coming from. Remember, she said that she would hear footsteps coming from the basement like it was up the stairs into the kitchen. Everything resided under those stairs in the basement. That's where the energy lived. So Zach kept pieces from the basement and took it to his museum, of course. So yeah, that was a very terrifying situation and story for this family. You should really watch the actual documentary and the interviews and Zach going there. Um, it gives you a better visual of what happened in that home and what Latoya and her family experienced. But I am so happy that she got her life back, got her children back, and got away from this energy because you don't know how many people experience things like this. There are so many people who have lived in homes and they were being terrorized and either nobody believed them. And it's just a very lonely experience. And some people get out of it, like Latoya. Some people can get cleansed or get exorcisms or sometimes people can even cleanse their homes and be able to stay in their homes. Some people literally don't. Some people get an attachment. I mean, there are so many demonic entities on this planet, whether you believe it or not not my problem nor is it my job to convince you but it's a very scary situation i've experienced demonic activity myself and i know that it can be scary and luckily i've never experienced it to that extreme but i'm assuming that that how i mean i know for a fact that she didn't experience this before she moved in she experienced it when they moved in so there was something, there was some kind of portal or some kind of energy summoned. Actually, you know what, now that I think of it, I think I have read somewhere that someone was performing rituals in that basement. So someone summoned or conjured something there. And that's actually really a common thing, especially like all these paranormal locations that people investigate. I'm going to investigate some locations too. Um, but I think that the reason that most of them are haunted, even if the stories behind the haunting were fake originally, so many people going there, conjuring, contacting, opening portals will make a place, even if it wasn't haunted, haunted. And uh, so you need to be very careful with where you go. Make sure you're always blessed and protected and um, make sure you stay in your authority to Tell things to stay away from you, not to follow you, don't touch you, you know, because these situations can get very scary, like Latoya's case. So let me know if you've seen this documentary, let me know um, what you think, and what else would you like me to talk about or film about? Thank you so much for watching, please be sure to like and share and subscribe and don't forget to stay creepy. Bye.